Come with me as we recap Grotesquery episode four, five, and six. Watch our first part if you haven't, but basically our main character Lois is a detective trying to catch a religious killer. Lois visits her comatose husband Marshall at the hospital, saying that she won't be able to visit him every day because she needs to catch the killer. She adds that she and Marshall both deserve death for their sins. Nurse Red is recording the conversation, getting enough evidence to accuse Lois of abandoning her husband. Miss Orange Fanta Pants is my primary suspect. Meanwhile, Sister Megan is spying on Father Charlie while he is exercising. This Father Giat to have a CDL for carrying that dump truck. Later, she asks for his approval regarding a new article, and he disapproves because the story doesn't have bloodlust or fear in it. Sister Megan tries convincing him, and they end up in his room. Father Charlie starts talking about a radical change being discussed in the Vatican and how the church should start modernizing. He teases the nun, and Sister Megan pulls away the towel wrapped around him. She thinks that sex is still a sin, but Father Charlie continues to take off her clothes, tease her, and pin her down before blessing her with his holy water. Waiting on TikTok for these Nicholas Alexander Chavez edits, Eddie knows how stressed Lois is, so he takes her to a focus group discussion before treating her to dinner. After their date, Lois calls Sister Megan to help her see Father Charlie. It's already late at night, but Father Charlie's happy to receive the detective's confession. Lois confesses that she's having an affair while her husband is in the hospital. She adds that she drowns herself in liquor instead of taking good care of her family. When she mentions the darkness taking over the world, Father Charlie tells her that it doesn't matter if God has abandoned us all because we know the good from evil and it's time for us to take charge. When Lois returns home, Merritt hands over the puzzle box already open. It has a note with coordinates written on it. Because she has to leave, Lois asks Eddie to stay with Merritt just until they catch the killer. Merritt thinks the two are having an affair, but Lois denies it and says Eddie is someone who will protect her. Don't lie. Lois and two Republican-looking men who are actually Democrats. The next day, Lois and Sister Megan begin their long drive into the desert. The two are so bored that they just start singing. Lois discovers that Sister Megan got into Juilliard, but the church really was her calling, so she became a nun. Sister Megan thinks that their trip is a trap set up by the killer to catch them both, but Lois is determined to find out what is in their destination. The two stumble upon a huge fire pit in the middle of the desert, and Sister Megan is reminded of a verse from the Bible. She concludes that the killer wants to tell them that he is in a very dark place and cut off from God's love. Another car approaches, and Lois immediately takes her gun and points it at him. The man introduces himself as Dr. Joe Ritter of the U.S. Geological Survey. He says that there had been recurring earthquakes for the past two weeks and that no one should be in the area. He describes the massive fire pit as a sinkhole over a natural gas deposit and that he's there to keep people away. The man wonders if hell finally opened up. Realizing that he's not the man they're looking for, Lois drives off and takes the route back home. However, their way is blocked by a burning car and a fire truck, so they have to turn back and spend the night in a motel in the valley. The land is dry, and there is fire everywhere aside from the abandoned cars on the side of the road. Sister Megan thinks that grotesquery is doing a good job scaring them. When they reach the motel, they find a man who refuses to leave the area. He tells Lois that the safest place for them to be is on the road, because it's too late for them to turn back. Then he hands her a fire blanket she can use in case the worst happens. Sister Megan is frightened because she thinks hell is opening up because she slept with Father Charlie. That wasn't hell opening up. That was your vag. She admits that she wanted Father Charlie and continues to blame herself, despite Lois telling her not to. Suddenly, in the midst of all the smoke and dust, a woman covered in blood appears in the middle of the road. Sister Megan lets her in, and she screams at Lois to step on the gas because he is coming. The young woman's name is Andrea, and she says she got into an accident. She points Lois to a nearby motel where they can stay until the fires are out. Lois offers to help, seeing that someone beat up Andrea, but the woman doesn't want their help. Even the motel's pool has turned into Kool-Aid grape, and Sister Megan is getting more scared by the minute. The receptionist explains that the pool turned purple because of the ash from the fire reacting with the chlorine. She warns them not to swim there because it's acidic. Lois says it reminds her of a drink she used to get. Lois notices the receptionist's black eye, and she suspects that a boyfriend probably beat her up. She asks if a guy named Nick did it to her, but the receptionist tells her off, saying that it's none of her business. Sister Megan continues to look for Andrea, and they only find bloody toilet paper and cloths. They follow her footprints out of the building, but other guests don't seem to care. 
Lois senses that there's something off about the place, and Sister Megan starts praying. Lois refuses to join her, and instead she turns on the TV to check the news. Sister Megan begins clearing the side of the building to avoid any debris from catching fire, and while she does, she spots a man walking in her direction. Then a collision happens nearby, and she goes to help the people involved in the crash. She walks away to ask for help, but finds Nick drowning the receptionist in the acidic pool. Lois is busy talking to Nurse Red, who tells Lois that she's not getting better, and she doesn't seem to hear Sister Megan saying that Nick is a dangerous man. The receptionist denies being beaten, and Lois keeps trying to use the phone. Suddenly, bullets start to fly everywhere, and the detective goes back to her room to grab her gun. As she loads her gun with bullets, Sister Megan continues to pray for their safety. They overhear Nick beating up the receptionist, and when they open the door, they find him pointing the gun at Andrea. Lois tries to pacify the situation, but Nick refuses to listen. In the midst of the altercation, a man gets out of a car and picks up Andrea. Sister Megan tries to help her, but she gets shot in the stomach. Father Charlie visits her at the hospital and blames Lois for what happened. He thinks Lois used Sister Megan as a bait to catch the killer, knowing that he wants the detective dead. Later, Detective Hanover reveals she looked into the previous cases that Lois handled before. She's looking for people who would want to get revenge on Lois. They end up with one name who they think is possibly the one responsible for the killing, Glorious McCall. Lois is surprised that Glorious got out two months ago, right around the time the murder started. The next day, Lois is awakened by another report about a new murder case at a maternity house connected to a church where pregnant women can give their babies up for adoption. A gruesome killing has taken place. The killer used C-section retractors to three pregnant women who were so close to giving birth. He took the babies and let the women bleed to death. Jack tells Lois that the governor asked the FBI to take over, but Lois says she's not giving up until she catches the killer. An officer Franklin reports to Lois that a pregnant woman went missing the night before. After talking to the kids left at the house, Lois figures out they have a new lead. On her way back, Lois finds an abandoned car with blood-stained clothes inside. She looks for the mother and finds an old woman, shaking and crying as she holds the baby. The woman says the man is going to kill her, so Lois takes the baby, glad that the child is still alive and breathing. Honestly, episode 5 feels like a fever dream. I'm not sure how to explain this, but we might find the reason for this particular episode later on. The doctor confirms to Lois that the blood found on the baby doesn't belong to the woman. They have tested her blood and confirmed that she did not give birth that day. Lois says that ain't surprising because Maisie is as old as RuPaul Charles. So Lois asks the doctor to keep the woman in the ward for 72 hours until she figures out what's happening. The woman's name is Maisie Montgomery, and she insists that the baby is hers despite her old age. She mentions Sarah from the Bible who gave birth when she was already 90 years old, all the while insisting that everything that happened was glorious. Maisie is played by the old woman in the front room. I wouldn't be trusting Maisie just based on that racist character alone. Detective Hanover reveals that they got information from Interpol about Maisie's real identity. She says that Maisie was part of a family trafficking babies in Cyprus, connected to Glorious McCall's human trafficking case. Lois then realizes the connection and decides to pay McCall a visit. She takes Officer Franklin with her. Glorious reveals that she gave Interpol the baby traders, and she was put in the witness protection program. Lois is not impressed because she thinks Glorious should be in jail for what she did to the girl she trafficked but Glorious believes she has helped them. Glorious adds that she saved the baby before it was sold to another family. Then she handed him to Maisie. Officer Franklin notices that Glorious people were taking out their guns, but Lois tries to get Glorious to go to the precinct peacefully. She refuses and her people were about to shoot. Franklin shoots them first and arrests Glorious afterward. Glorious reveals that Lois is being toyed by a false prophet. She adds that Lois will be a sacrifice the death of the good and the bad will surely bring the believers back to church. Then Gloria says that Maisie was one of the killer's congregants. One night, Nurse Red visits Lois to talk about Marshall. She reveals how she met Marshall and how he became the light she was looking for in her life. She got attached and even comforted him after the fallout of his marriage with Lois. She admits that she offered Marshall to run away with her, but he refused to leave his family. Oh, I knew that hoe was a trifling ass. Marshall, a trifling man, Poor too for that. Lois holds Nurse Red's hands, admiring her courage for admitting the truth. Then she takes her gun and threatens to shoot the nurse if she doesn't avoid Marshall. So Nurse Red runs out of the house as fast as she can. Miss Niecy Nash don't play. Maisie reveals that she used to take babies for the killer, but Gloria saved her and helped her save the babies. 
Maisie doesn't feel sorry for the mothers they've kidnapped because she thinks they would have given up their babies to strangers anyway. So she believed the killer when he said they would be saving the babies. Then Maisie adds that the killer has bigger plans for Lois because he admires her, adding that Lois was only lured away to the desert and not necessarily to be killed. Then Maisie finally shares where the babies and the mothers are taken. When the authorities arrive at the scene, they find women gagged and bound with pumps connected to their breasts. The end of the tube is used to feed the abducted babies who are all unharmed in their cribs. Lois leaves the room to look for more clues and she discovers a wall plastered with photos of her at the crime scene. Suddenly, someone from behind her points a knife to her neck. Lois grabs and shoots the man before he could slit her throat, and he falls to the floor. Then she removes the mask to finally reveal the face of the killer who has been haunting her. Episode 6 just ends like that. We don't know who was behind it until the next episode. Should we cover more? I feel like I have more questions than answers after these three episodes. It was such a tonal shift. What did you guys think about these episodes? Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.